Hello, welcome back. I'm Denise Niclo with Berkshire Hathaway, the preferred realty in Pittsburgh, and we're here with uh, Nitsa and Jess talking mortgage. Welcome, Jess Lyons. Hey, hi, Denise. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? How was vacation? Vacation was lovely. I wish every day could be a vacation, <laughs> but it's it's good to be back. Yes, we're happy to have you back. Glad that you enjoyed some time away and, you know, rest and recharge. So what uh, what do you want to talk about with us today? What's on the agenda? Well, today I was thinking we could kind of talk about how much money you need to purchase a home. This is always a really big question that a lot of people have, and they never really think they have enough money. And they always think that they should put off waiting to buy just so that they can save up more money. But I want to kind of talk about that and just kind of let people know that you don't necessarily need as much money as you think you need. Um, so we have a lot of different programs out there, Denitza, that basically allow people to put down as much or as little as they want to. And when I say as little, I guess I should say that not really as little as they want to, because most people will tell me they'd like to put down absolutely nothing. Yeah, so, you know, some money is needed, but you yes, know, yes. the minimum w would be good. Right, right. So like a lot of people have the misconception that they need to put down 20%. That went away many, 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 many years ago, long before I ever started even doing uh, originating. And I've been in the business now for 20 years. So um, we do have a variety of different programs out there. And for the right program, you can actually get away with putting a zero down payment. And if the sellers will cooperate, you can do um, seller's assist. So I've had people get into homes for as little as like five to a thousand dollars. So essentially the cost of the appraisal and the home inspection. Sometimes we can even have it where the appraisals included and just the home inspections being paid for. Um, typically for that type of loan, you need to be a veteran. Um, but with our veterans, they can do the zero down. Um, they don't have to pay any kind of mortgage insurance. And they can also ask the sellers for seller's assist. So um, all they really have to pay for is their home inspection. And the cost of that varies, as you know, depending on who they choose to use and what type of services they're having done. Um, because if you don't know buyers out there, there are many different end things that can be inspected. So the more specific and more detailed of an inspection you have, the more cost there is because there's different tests that could be run. Um, so that's the great thing if you do qualify for a VA loan. But as you know, a lot of people do not qualify for a VA loan. Um, so we've no, got one thing um, some people may not realize Coast Guard does qualify for VA loans, correct? Members mm -hmm. of the yes. Coast Guard. Okay. Yep. They do. Um, so we've got another program that will allow for zero down, and it's called the Rural Housing Loan. So with the Rural Housing Loan, it's very particular, like the VA who qualifies. Um, so for USDA, you need to be in a rural housing area. You also need to have a specific income because there is an income limit on that. And if you exceed the income, then you won't qualify for USDA. Um, the other thing about USDA that's kind of particular is they look at the total household income. So even if you have a wife or like a parent or somebody that lives in the house that maybe is collecting like social security or disability, but they're not actually working and they're not going on the loan, they're still going to look at that income as far as disqualifying you for being able to be eligible for USDA. So it's a great product and it's, you know, a loan that has really helped a lot of people out, but it is particular. So obviously, whenever you talk to a mortgage professional or someone like myself, they'll go through and see if you qualify for that type of loan. And then they'll let you know, like, hey, okay, you do qualify for this. And in order to get it where you truly don't have anything but the cost of the home inspection, you have to have sellers that are willing to give the sellers assist in order to cover the closing costs. So now, um, with the USDA being the rural loan program, that doesn't mean that you have to be buying, you know, a rural property like a farmland or a large tract of land. It just has to be, you know, in a more rural community. So Allegheny County is probably out of the mix, but like Washington, Beaver, Butler, those might work. 
Right, correct. Yeah, so in Allegheny County, there's a few small pockets that qualify for the rural housing, but there are not many at all. Um, but when you get into Butler County or Westmoreland or Washington County, the majority of it is rural housing. So basically what they're looking at, Denitza, is they're looking at how many homes there are within a certain square mile radius. And if it's under that amount, then it qualifies for rural housing. But like you said, it doesn't have to be 10 acres of land and it doesn't have to be out in the middle of nowhere. It just has to be in an area that's less densely populated than mostly Allegheny County. Um, <laughs> So, and the other great thing about USDA to Denitza is the mortgage insurance with the rural housing loan is substantially lower than on an FHA loan. So um, it's a really great program if someone qualifies for it and if they're willing, you know, to live outside of Allegheny County in one of the more rural areas. Yeah, which can also help with taxes overall because, you know, we have plenty of people who, when you're looking north or east or right on those border lines, they're going to move outside the county anyway, um, knowing that taxes are a little less. So, you know, multiple benefits if that fits what you're, you know, looking for. Yes, yeah, no, definitely. The taxes outside of Allegheny County. Um, other than Beaver County, I feel like Washington and Butler are substantially lower than Allegheny County and Westmoreland County as well. So I agree. It definitely is a win-win situation there. So something to consider when you're looking to purchase a home. Okay. So now, um, you know, those are the two programs that somebody could get in with like the absolute minimum, a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars for any inspection. What are the next, uh, you know, lowest cost closing costs that we might see? Yes. So um, the great thing is this, we have a product with the conventional loans. It's for a 3% down. So with the 3% down, there are certain spe uh, specifications with that as well. But the great thing about the um, conventional 3% down is you're not paying, um, typically with those, you're not paying as high a mortgage insurance as you would with an FHA loan. Um, because normally if we're going to go the conventional route, usually you have a higher credit score than what we would be doing with an FHA. So um, the 3% down does allow the sellers to contribute up to 3% in seller's assist. So you can also get credit from the seller and that helps. So, I mean, essentially, I would say you're probably talking between three plus the rest of the closing costs that the sellers can't cover, you're probably talking about needing 6% of the overall purchase price on the 3% conventional loan. Um, and so what I like to do for people is whenever we're looking and people have a limited amount of money to work with, typically we'll run the numbers for conventional and FHA products and kind of see what is the best. Um, the other thing really nice too, Denitza, about the conventional is there is a new program that's a grant program, and depending on what the borrower's income is, they may qualify for up to 2500 of free money that awesome. all they basically have to do is a quick 45-minute phone call, and then they get credited the $2,500 towards their closing cost and everything. So um, it's a great program, and yeah. if you qualify for it, you know, we're always looking at all the different options to see how to get somebody in for the least amount of money mm -hmm. and also like the lowest payment and the overall total picture. So a lot of time people get really focused on the rate, but the rate isn't necessarily everything when it comes to picking out the right program for somebody. Um, obviously the total monthly payment plus the total cost and out-of-pocket expense, like all those things are factored in. And that's kind of how we figure out what's the best program. Which is why you want to make sure you're communicating and talking through with a, a good loan provider, not just, you know, putting information into a computer system and taking a printout of, hey, this is what it's going to be. Because just because you fit one criteria doesn't mean that, you know, that works the best. That's why um, it's always good to, you know, talk all through and don't hold anything back in terms of income and, you know, credit and, and assets. And, you know, have you had run into people where they say, well, I have this much, but I want to save this much. So, you know, you have to work within bounds that they give you, right? Yes, no, definitely. And you're so right. I mean, 
Unfortunately, in this day and age of technology, a lot of people just want to go online, not talk to anybody and just throw it in, get their quick pre-approval. But they're really doing themselves a disservice by doing that, because like you said, the computer only knows what's inputted into the system. And unfortunately, sometimes people will miscalculate their income. They'll miscalculate their assets. And it could be detrimental. It could be the difference between getting a loan and not getting a loan. And if you're not talking to anybody, how do you know that you're not getting the best, like, how do you know you're getting the right loan for you? Mm -hmm. um, and so, I don't know. I think it's definitely a disservice to go online and just input your information and get a quick pre-approval. And um, the other thing too is, as the process goes along, if you don't have somebody to communicate with, you've seen it working with these lenders that do this stuff, how big problems can come up and then there's nobody to fix them. There's nobody yep. on your side to work for you. So I don't know. It's super important that you get somebody that's really going to be paying attention to everything and on top of it because, um, you know, I know people that work at the bigger lenders that do a lot of online stuff. I've worked for a bigger lender myself. And at the end of the day, when you're dealing with those type of companies, you're a number to them. And that's what it comes down to. They oh, only have so much help. And um, unfortunately, people tend to get lost in the shuffle. Um, I worked at Wells Fargo for a period of time. And I've worked at a few other big banks. And I really dislike them just because even though I was in control, I really wasn't in control. I was waiting on other people always to get me information and things just didn't go as smoothly as I like. So that's why I decided to go to the smaller companies where I could be in complete control, talk to underwriters, be able to get involved as much or as little as I need to, to make sure that things were getting done in like a timely fashion. That's awesome. And I'm so glad you did that because that's how we ended up connecting and, you know, we're able to provide great services to great customers. So the other two loans, um, I mean, you, you touched on a conventional with a 3% down, but the usual minimum of that, if they don't apply or don't qualify for programs is how much? Um, so if you are not a first time home buyer, typically the minimum down payment is going to be 5% if you currently have owned a home within the last three years. Um, so with the 5% down, you can still ask for up to 3% seller's assist, but you will need a little bit of a larger down payment if you've already owned one home. And uh, something else too, Denise, uh, like that we talk about is when people are trying to go from one house to another house, it's actually a little bit more complicated than first time home buying because you're trying to coordinate the sale of another house or you're trying to figure out how to buy the new house without having to sell the other house first. So it's super important that you talk to somebody really ahead of the ball game because there are different things that we can do to tap into the uh, into the equity in your current home so that you might not have to sell the old home and the new home on the same day. Um, but it's super key that if that's something that you might wanna do, we need to do that ahead of time because the things that we're doing take time to do. So you can't <laughs> find a house and say, oh, you know what? I really want this house, but I don't have any access to any of my equity in my home and I don't have any money to put down. That doesn't work. So, yeah, so that sounds like, you know, it's probably, that might be our next topic next week that we talk about yes. that sort of, um, you know, what's the process in, if you want to move up, move down, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, touch base or, or keep on track um, next week that that'll be our topic. Uh, let's make a note. Um, but FHA is the last type of loan product that you haven't yep. filled us in on, right? Yeah. So FHA, a lot of first time home buyers love to do an FHA and it's not always even, everybody assumes that FHA is just for first time home buyers. It is not. Um, FHA primarily can help people that have less money to work with. Um, because you can ask for 6% seller's assist and you can do 3.5% down payment. Um, so FHA can typically be one of the lowest out-of-pocket cost type of loans. Um, but we do have like second-time buyers, third-time buyers that use FHA. If their credit's not the greatest, FHA, um, those loans are insured by the government. So because of that, they're able to offer them a much lower interest rate than on a conventional loan um, if they have a lower credit score. So 
but FHA is a great loan and, you know, three and a half percent down, it can be a gift, which is great because sometimes we have grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, somebody wants to contribute and help you buy your first house. So you don't necessarily have to have any money of your own if you have somebody that's willing to give you that three and a half percent. We also do have some down payment assistance programs that will help to get you the money for the down payment. So um, there are ways that we can turn an FHA into zero down. It's a little bit harder and the rules are a little bit more strict, but we do have some options there too. Oh, well, that's great news. I know I've definitely had some clients who have had, you know, gifts from family members or used various programs that helped with some of those closing costs. So they're there for a reason. And, you know, when the people are right, they should use them. Um, so, um, you know, in closing, probably minimum that somebody would need, you know, definitely the inspection price, which could run about, you know, $300 to, you know, seven, eight, maybe a thousand, as Jess said, yep. depending on what inspections you want. Um, and an appraisal cost. So on average, what are you seeing as an appraisal cost now? Um, so it does vary depending on the lender and also the type of loan, but really I would say between 525 up to like 625 is typically what we see for almost every loan. So somewhere right around there. So, you know, thinking if you can qualify for some of those programs, bare minimum, you're probably looking to put out is around $1,000. Um, but, you know, my opinion if you have a little bit more, it's always better because something's going to come up, right? Um, but yes. good to know that there are these programs. So anything else that you think would be really worth uh, our listeners knowing about today? I don't know. I don't think so, Denise. I know we <laughs> talked about a lot and I threw a lot of information out at everybody because I get excited and I start talking and just going on and on. But um, no, I mean, I think there's a lot of great options for people and I guess the biggest thing that we just want people to know is that you don't need 20% or 10%. There's a lot of different options out there. And right now, there's a lot less buyers in the market. So sellers are willing to take these options that they weren't taking before. So I think it's a great time for everybody. You know, if you want to consider purchasing in the next year to two years, you should definitely talk to someone like Denitza or myself and just get a game plan together to figure out um, how you can become a homeowner. Yeah, I think that's a, a perfect sentiment to end on. Um, so our, again, our contact information is in the comments, um, in the, the description down below. Reach out to us. We are more than willing to help and answer questions at any time. And we look forward to coming back with you next week to talk about, you know, what do you do when you already own a house and now you want to buy a new one? So thanks so much for checking in with us. Jess, as always, wonderful to chat with you. Thanks, Denise. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye.